Coming up on this special Around the Globe episode of Earth. We take you from continent to continent around the world. We take you to London in the United Kingdom and a master plan to make this the world's most connected and sustainable city. To Bali, Indonesia and a bold new plan to save our ocean waters from plastic waste. To the South Island of New Zealand and how this birthplace to oral probiotics is keeping us healthy. And to Middletown, Ohio in America to see the world's most recycled material, steel. It's all coming up on Earth. I'm John Holden. Welcome to Earth. Hi, I'm John Holden, and welcome to Earth. We're starting off our show here along the coastline of Bali, Indonesia. You know, our ocean waters are in deep trouble because of plastic pollution, and nowhere is that more evident than here along Bali's beaches. But this is also ground zero for a tide-turning recycling program that's not only helping clean up our ocean waters, but helping an impoverished community have a better standard of living at the same time. How is that possible? Let's take a look. Our global oceans are the lifeblood of this good earth and sanctuary to an abundance of sea life. But our ocean waters are at risk from an estimated 8 million tons of plastic that enters these waters each year. No one knows the health risk facing our oceans and planet better than Fisk Johnson. Yeah, I mean, as you can see around me on this beach, you know, the plastic waste accumulating here. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking to see it. Um, Literally 15 billion pounds of plastic get poured into the ocean every year. Well, I've been diving all over the world for 45 years. And, you know, as time has gone on, I've seen this problem get worse and worse. Um, I have been on beaches where you can't even see the sand on the beach because it's just literally completely covered with plastic trash. I mean, it's incredibly heartbreaking to see that. Now, many will talk about the need to clean our ocean waters, but Fisk is in the unique position of power and partnership to actually do something about it. Fisk is also the chairman and CEO of SC Johnson, a global powerhouse of household cleaning products we all use a family company with more than 65 brands, with a long-term commitment to the environment and a promise to clean our oceans and waterways. Our family and our company has had a very long history of environmental responsibility, ranging from you know reducing our carbon footprint around the world to uh, focusing on greener and greener chemistry that goes into our products. Uh, to issues like plastic waste, uh, which is one of our biggest environmental issues. So how do you go about tackling the problem of plastic polluting our ocean waters? You start at its source and the communities where plastic first enters the water, like here in Bali. More than 80% of ocean plastic comes from Asia. 20% of that is from Indonesia and beaches like this in Bali. But this is also where Fisk hopes that plastic pollution can be stopped while helping impoverished people at the same time. Plastic Bank uh, is really doing a wonderful thing because they are collecting plastic before it has a chance to get into the ocean. And not only does Plastic Bank have that environmental benefit, but it also has a social benefit because it helps bring people out of poverty because it allows them to get paid for collecting plastic and they have an opportunity to make more money than they have in the past. With partnership with S.E. Johnson, 
We are working together to create eight collection center facility in Bali, where anyone can bring their plastic into our collection center and getting value out of the plastic. Once they go to plastic bank, they now realize I'm saving the planet. I'm not only having money for my life, but I'm also saving the planet. That increased their dignity. The plastic bank program is designed to educate the locals about using plastic responsibly, as well as the benefits of recycling. Each bag of plastic trash becomes a new source of income when it's turned in at one of the plastic bank recycling centers in Bali, where it's exchanged for digital currency that can be used in the marketplace. So what we saw is the collectors that coming here every day, every morning to pick up plastic, and then after that they will sell it so they can have, a, they can have food and their basic needs in life. And the impact is felt not just here near the plastic bank, but throughout Bali as well thanks to mobile units from the plastic bank that cover the entire community. So the idea of this mobile collection center unit is this mobile will go anywhere in community center, in public spaces, everywhere where we have a crowd to start to engaging people, start educate them what can they do with their plastic and how much valuable is the plastic and then we can collect the plastic from them. It's all about working together to solve the root cause of plastic pollution in our planet's oceans. Something that Fisk Johnson says can benefit global business as well as its people. My hope is that we can solve this issue and others for the benefit of our children and our children's children. You know, I want my daughter to grow up in you know, the beautiful world and environment that I had the opportunity to grow up in. And I think it's critical that all of us here today work hard to solve all the big global issues that we face to create a better world for our children tomorrow. You know, the tide is turning on this new movement from keeping plastic like this from becoming waste. And it's starting right here on the beaches of Bali, where the new plastic economy is changing lives. Up next, the South Island of New Zealand and the most healthy town of Dunedin. And all you gotta do is take a big deep breath and look at the people around you and you see healthy living. And it's all due to bacteria. And I mean good bacteria. The kind of bacteria that was discovered here due to scientific research in this country down under, as you're about to see. New Zealand. It's a country known for its scenic beauty, ocean surf, unique wildlife, and most certainly, clean, healthy living. That clean living is a big reason for the overall health and wellness of the New Zealanders who live here. The biggest thing in uh, New Zealand, you look around you, you know, we've got such a wonderful country, uh, surrounded by a whole lot of water, you know, the people are driven by sport and succeeding. Kids want to grow up uh, playing for their, for, for their country in whatever sport they choose. Um, and you know, just even down here in Dunedin on a weekend, you'll find these fields all around us filled with kids running around with a rugby ball. So, you know, I think that drives good health, that drives good behaviour, and uh, ultimately, you know, people enjoy themselves. And John Tagg certainly knows about human health. He's America's Professor of Microbiology at Dunedin's University of Otago, where he's a working legend for not only his health research in probiotics, but also for his research in solving his own health scare as a child when he suffered from strep throat that led to rheumatic fever. I have a sort of a, a love-hate affair with the streptococcus over my life. Some of them are good and some of them seem to be bad. And so most of my life I was trying to come to terms with how can we live, how can we coexist with the bad streptococci by using strategies, particular strategies, to keep them from causing disease. It was from Professor Tagg's drive to find a solution to his own health problem that Bliss was born, the world's first oral probiotics, from the mouth, for the mouth. This unique probiotic strain for our respiratory health and well-being is designed to prevent infection before it starts. These are oral probiotics, not the bacteria that reside in the gut, but rather the naturally occurring bacteria that reside in our own mouth, bacteria strains that Professor Tagg still keeps at the university for safekeeping and future research. 
So John, why is this campus important to you? I love this campus because it gave me a place where I could research on my beloved streptococci for 40 years, I guess. And still, even though I've left the Department of Microbiology, my bacteria linger on there in suspended animation in a deep freeze up in the Department of Microbiology. And I visit there periodically just to make a selection of some new candidates for development as probiotics. So, love this spot. It's been great to me. Now, as scientific director of Bliss Technologies, John Tagg's research continues today in his own lab in Dunedin, where single high-potency strains of oral probiotics continue to be discovered. Strains such as Bliss K12 and Bliss M18, which provide protection from pathogenic bacteria that can infect teeth and gums, cause bad breath, and develop into respiratory problems. What I was interested in developing was a different sort of probiotic rather than for the gut. I wanted one that was specific really for the oral cavity. After all, it seems that it's the mouth where most of the microorganisms that we encounter enter our body through the mouth. So this portal of entry for the bad bacteria, why don't we have our defenses of probiotic bacteria established there to meet the enemy right at the front row. The more we study this organism, the more we find out about it and its capability of helping to protect humans against malevolent microbes. In the nearby Bliss manufacturing facility, hundreds of thousands of oral bacteria tablets are produced and packaged for distribution worldwide. Each individual tablet containing a host of living bacteria to aid in human health and wellness. In each lozenge, uh, we have about or minimum of two and a half billion um, bacteria or colonies of bacteria of, of Streptococcus salivarius K12 or M18. And they are pretty much in a dormant state. They're asleep um, and they can just remain asleep in, in that lozenge until you put it into your mouth. These naturally occurring strains of oral bacteria not only help prevent infection in the average person, but they're also helping high performance athletes prepare for intense competition. Athletes like Dunedin's own professional rugby team, the Highlanders, for whom Bliss is now a wellness partner. Super athletes like these guys who are the superstars of New Zealand sport are putting themselves under immense pressure all the time with their training and their playing and their traveling schedule. So to keep their immune systems as boosted as possible and themselves protected against bad bugs that they're gonna come into contact with, it's extremely important as part of a health and wellness regime. I think uh, the things that we're trying to achieve around health and well-being is the last 5% of an athlete's performance. And if we can get all our ducks lined up in a row and, and, and put all our athletes out on the field at 100%, the limits are endless, you know. We can uh, hopefully bring home a Super Rugby Championship. You know, you need healthy living to enjoy life on this good earth, and it's always nice to have a dose of good bacteria to help. Uh, probiotic for all ages, thanks to the scientific research underway, in this country down under. Our next stop, Middletown, Ohio, in the heart of America's manufacturing industry. Recycling and protecting the environment is a priority to this industry. So let me ask you, what do you think is the most recycled material on this planet today? Plastic, paper, Nope, the answer is steel. Yep, steel. Surprised? Let's take a look. Steel, it's all around us and a critical part of functioning in our thriving, innovative society. Every day we see and use steel in the products we know, from aircraft carriers to buildings, appliances, and automobiles. But steel is also fundamental to achieving a circular economy as the most recycled material in the world. Steel is unbelievably recyclable. Uh, more steel is recycled than paper and plastic combined. So you may not touch all of that steel, uh, but every bit of it can be reutilized almost infinitely, whether it's through thermal sources or nuclear or traditional 
uh, or in, uh, in renewable energy as well. Think of all the steel that goes into wind towers, for example. So it is vital to the 21st century sustainable circular economy that we all want to achieve. Every year, steel-making furnaces in North America reuse nearly 70 million tons of domestic steel scrap for the production of new steel. Recycling is a key part of the steel-making process. So these coils of steel represent America's economic heartbeat. I mean, there's 30 tons of material in this, uh, very responsibly made. A lot of that steel will end up in automobiles. So steel, it is continuously recyclable. It does not lose its quality. Uh, and it's a material that we're going to need well into the 21st century. So how do you make the most recyclable product in the world in an even more sustainable manner? That's something AK Steel in Middletown, Ohio, excels at. Well, AK Steel's been in the business of making steel for over a century. So sustainability has really been key and core to our business to be successful and to make it through the long term. And we continue to look at ways in our manufacturing process to come up with more sustainable ways so we're here for the future. This dedication to sustainability in steel production is continually tested and measured at AK Steel's Research and Innovation Center in Middletown, Ohio. Here, new innovations in steel are created every day. Innovations that are driving fundamental benefits and improvements in our world. So Roger, how important is innovation to AK Steel? Innovation is very important to our company. Uh, we're big in the auto industry, as shown here with one of these vehicles. And in this facility, we're actually able to crash test steel to see how steel will perform in the event of an accident. Part of the mission of our company is to create innovative steel solutions in a sustainable, safe, and profitable manner. In this new research center we have, we're able to actually replicate the entire steel making process from melting steel all the way to finishing the steel. So innovation is very alive and real in our business. For steel products, you need to be innovative. You need to come up with those solutions to help the customers out and to help the environment out. And so coming up with the different grades of steel is very important. And we have come up with many, many grades. It's really been the source of the success of our business to come up with those new steels for the future to help our customers. And really, we're working on trying to identify those steels that our customers don't even know they need yet. Innovation is also important to recycling in the steel industry. Recycling that not only will conserve energy, but also conserve our natural resources. Resources like water. And so when we're making steel, we use scrap, but also we recycle a lot of water. The manufacturing of steel requires a lot of water, and every month we recycle billions of gallons of water. Annually, we recycle 160 billion gallons of water. So to put that into context, that's enough water to service 4 million people. If you, if you look at all the steel making at, at AK Steel as a company, we recycle roughly 77% of all the water we use. The hot strip mill itself is really the, the lifeblood of the company. It, it's capable of processing roughly six million tons of steel every single year. You see slabs coming in the, the front of the mill, and those are being reduced and thinned down and gauged so you actually have coils like you would see out on the road on an interstate produced at the back end of the line. As the slabs come out of the reheat furnaces, they're red hot. So you require a lot of water in the process as you work your way down this half mile line to create coils to make roughly six million tons of steel every year at the hot strip mill. The great thing about steel is, is every single pound of steel coming off the process is recyclable. More and more Americans today want to know how everyday products are impacting the environment, and that includes steel products. The steel industry certainly knows this, and they're dedicated to making the steel life cycle sustainable for everyone on this good earth. Our next stop, London, England. You know, millions of people come here each year to see iconic sites like the Tower Bridge, and millions more people will be coming here in the decades to come to live. It's gonna require, though, a sustainability plan, and that means innovators and problem solvers to plan for the future. But right now, there's a master sustainability plan in effect for London to make it the most sustainable and connected city in the world, as you're about to see.
London, the iconic 21st century city, established over 2,000 years ago on the River Thames, a leading global city where more people than ever want to live and work. But today, London is facing massive growth, with an estimated 10.8 million people expected to be living in London by 2041. That means key challenges must be overcome. Well, London is a great success as a city. It's about 8.8 .8 million people live here now. Uh, and what we're seeing is uh, growth in the city. And we expect to uh, go over 10 million in the next 10 years, so become a mega city. Uh, largest city in Europe. It creates a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges for infrastructure in terms of housing. How do we provide enough housing for, uh, for Londoners to live in? Uh, it creates a lot of problems for transport, which I'm responsible for, and it also creates a lot of issues for environment. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan's vision of growth and sustainability looks ahead two decades and includes a comprehensive view of all forms of transport embracing new technologies. It meant turning to a company known for innovation and problem solving. Jacobs, a global leader in city design, digital solutions, and advanced sciences with headquarters in Dallas, Texas, was asked to partner with organizations across London to introduce their Plan Beyond approach to sustainability. So Steve, all these are projects of Jacobs along the wall here. In dealing with so many projects, so many cities, what's your strategic focus? Yeah, as we work with cities across the globe, we're helping them tackle complex issues. It could be increasing population, it could be aging infrastructure. Uh, many are facing congestion, resiliency issues, environmental challenges, and, and ultimately we're trying to integrate social value. So where do you start? Well, we start by getting with their, you know, key people and taking a step back and imagining. And, you know, understanding what their desires are and put together a plan, a master plan. So explain how this vision specifically relates to the sustainability needs of London. Well, our Plan Beyond strategy and our global sustainability vision very much aligns with our clients' needs in the area of sustainability. And we developed our strategy with this in mind. It required citywide sustainable solution projects for which Jacobs was able to devise and execute a plan that will help prepare London for its growth for years to come. Projects like Olympic Park, site of the 2012 Summer Olympics, which is now a major attraction for, as you can see, both tourists and locals alike. So Mason, what does this site, Olympic Park, mean to Jacobs? Well, this is a really important area of London for Jacobs. Uh, we were appointed to oversee the construction of the Olympic Park, all the sporting venues, and we're really proud of what was achieved here. But what's really fascinating about this park now is what's happened since the Games. It's redevelopment as an area for the public to come and enjoy open green space, to walk, to cycle. It's a real asset for London and its legacy. And there are many sustainability projects presently underway throughout London in its public transportation system, from step-free access and street-to-train accessibility to ultra-low emission zones and even cycle superhighways into the city. I think there's real ambition in that plan and you need to have that vision really setting out where you want to go to. That allows you to have a suite of projects that really will make a difference to society. We need to have infrastructure that can really cope with the future. We're fantastic to have a great London Underground system, but it's, it's very old and it needs some work to bring it up to future standards. Um, we're really fortunate as Jacobs to have a long history of working with London Underground. And one of our projects has been step-free access proposals, making sure that that transport system is ready and accessible to all to improve connectivity for the future. ULES is a fantastic scheme that launched in April this year. It's the world's first ultra-low emission zone. Jacobs was really pleased to be part of the planning for that scheme. It's currently just in central London and already proven to be incredibly successful in improving air quality and congestion in the centre of London. We've had a number of cycle superhighways across London over the past few years, but this is really about making a separate space for cyclists away from traffic, so it's a much more safe environment um, and a much more pleasant route that will really encourage demand of sustainable modes such as cycling. Well, many of the projects we're working on within the capital are having a, a big impact. We're impacting the skyline uh, beneath our feet right now. We're building London's uh, new super sewer, which is going to increase the capacity of the capital sewerage system, helping to clean the river. 
and creating a cleaner capital for the people and its wildlife. Sustainability is inspiring to our people and we have an opportunity to nurture and develop the next generation of talent at Jacobs where we believe that we can create even better solutions that we haven't imagined today to help shape a better tomorrow. There's still an Olympic-sized project of things to do for London yet to prepare for its future, but through innovative and sustainable solutions, I'm sure the City of London will prevail. I'm John Holden. Thanks for watching. On the next episode of Earth, we meet a company in Virginia that's leading the way in energy innovation. We take you to a desert location in Arizona that offers unique opportunities coming from one of the Earth's most nutritious foods, the egg. And we meet a plant that could be nature's answer to our own health and wellness. Cannabis is our future uh, as it relates to healthcare. Well, it probably reminds me of a little of uh, when the New World was discovered. <laughs> and people came flocking to the other side of the world not knowing what they were getting into. That and more coming up on Earth.